May the words that are heard be thine and not mine. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The young lawyer said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. Go therefore into all nations. Go and sin no more. All of these are imperatives from our Lord Christ. How do they differ from other notable directives like, Go west, young man. Go confidently in the direction of your dreams. You can go your own way. One of these is justification for the self-entitled American Manifest Destiny, the next a famous mantra of Henry David Thoreau, and the last, the principal lyrics of a Fleetwood Mac rock hit, all of which are imperatives in their own right. All could be considered as inspirational or at least self-help, yet Jesus' words carry much more weight, rightly so, and present more personal, spiritual cost and internal strife. Go and do likewise. Do what likewise? I mean, sure, the story of the Good Samaritan is easy enough to interpret. It's also known as Good Sam, as entitled in one of Leanne's books provided for the children out in our narthex. The story seems interpretable enough. Be kind to others. Help each other along the way. Don't be so self-absorbed. Straightforward enough right? Maybe we should unpack this parable a little bit just to be sure. So it's simple enough. There's this guy, he, he goes on a trip, and along the way he is mugged and beaten badly by some hooligans, supposedly left to die. Two religious types pass him by, purposefully moving to the other side of the path. One of them was a priest, and <laughs> you can't trust them for anything. They were more concentrated on the ritual laws of uncleanliness than loving their neighbor. Finally, a lowly Samaritan helps the unfortunate one and saves the day by going far above and beyond the normal standards of being just a good guy. We should do that also. Plain and simple, there you go. So everybody on your way home tonight, be very careful to notice if there's anybody lying in a ditch somewhere and then you will have figured it all out straightforward yet haven't we often realized that there's more to these allegories of Christ there's more to it swimming under the surface the key word is the word love used to describe this neighborly nod love your neighbor we'll get to that in a moment but first let's talk about the Samaritans who were those guys we'll need to go back in history a little bit Jewish history to the fall of Judah to the Babylonians remember them not a good day to be a child of Israel's God a common practice of the era was that the conquering nation would apprehend all of the remaining best and brightest that the conquered could offer and cart them away in bondage back to, in this case, Babylon. There they would glean from them all the knowledge and talents that they deemed worthy. This processing served a twofold purpose. Number one, yielding greater knowledge of the new territory acquired and appeasing their gods, because the last thing you want is to upset somebody else's god, especially if you don't know anything about it. The other side of the coin was that the leftovers back in this case, Israel, would be subjected to a force integration from other peoples, from other conquered lands. And once the supplanting process occurred, the coalition would be a deluded hodgepodge with no nationalistic or rebellious interests. It was very effective. The Samaritans were the product of this acclamation by the Babylonians. 
though they continued to worship Israel's God, they became interbred, mixed blood, undesirable to the Jews. The Jews eventually would return to Israel when the Persians beat the Babylonians. And when they arrived, they discovered these half-breed undesirables. They despised them for being less than pure and considered themselves the righteous remnant. The pure blood settled in what was previously Judah, roughly saying. And the Samaritans, they settled in what was once northern Israel. What once had a capital, Samaria. That became their capital. The righteous remnant, when they came back, they made their capital in Jerusalem. Make no mistake about it. Samaria and Jerusalem as examples of their larger state hated one another. They loathed one another. We simply don't know that kind of guile. Whatever is the worst hatred that you can imagine that you might have even experienced, this was beyond that. Now can you see the significance of the Good Samaritan? Jesus told the Jewish audience to do as the Samaritan did. It was a Jewish audience. Jesus was a good Jew. So that was a big deal and it wasn't very popular. You go around saying stuff like that, you'll get yourself crucified. Now let's go back to this word love. The word accustomed to the Hebrew lawyer would have been ahib, ahib. It's a good one, translated as the love you have for your dearest family members. So this would be the way that I love Allie and I love Lily. It's this fierce, protective kind of love. They were supposed to love the Samaritans like that, like the way you love your family. Wow. Hey, did you notice in our Old Testament reading that Amos, as a mouthpiece of God, is saying that God's people had fallen short of the plumb line standard, the Torah that was set for them? Jason read it for us a moment ago. Amos warned that God would not pass them by again. This is reference to Exodus in Egypt when the death angel passed over the Jewish homes, the Israel's, Israeli's homes, and they struck the Egyptian homes, taking their firstborn child. God is saying, I'll not pass you by again. God had had enough of their idolatry and their unjust social lack of love of their less privileged neighbors. A foreign army would be God's instrument for the punishment of the northern kingdom and would essentially give the same warning through Micah many years later to Judah. Scholars now think What God did? Neither Samaria nor Jerusalem. Listen. So the northern kingdom, they were conquered by the Assyrians. And the southern kingdom, who conquered them? Wait for it. The Babylonians. Now, isn't that interesting? Hmm. The young lawyer references the same plumb line in our reading from Luke. Instead, Jesus inferred a new standard of the gospel. Paul re reinforces this there in Colossians. The gospel was to be the new level or plumb that would not tolerate passing by on the other side of the path. Those who look different or are born different or love different or vote different or kneel different. We are called to Aheb, and we Aheb everyone. Everyone is our neighbor. 
And the Good Samaritan wasn't just passing it forward either. He was an example of a new measurement, a new standard, the gospel standard. Hmm. Oh, by the way, sometimes God's winks are unmistakable. Neighbor is intended to mean everyone and not literally the people who live next door to you in your neighborhood. But just for fun, just for fun, guess who my new across-the-street neighbor is? His name is Consul. He is a Hindu Indian engineer. Often we sit on each other's porches to share a drink, and I ahead that guy. Who would have thought it? An Episcopal priest with a uh, um, engineer? <laughs> <laughs> We're friends. Who would have thought it? <laughs> 